Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. It's great to be here. So the talk, the talk will be on SYK, and there'll be two parts. So the first will be an overview of SYK. And the second will, will be on the title, which is the bulk dual, the ADS dual of SYK. And the second part uh, will mostly follow this paper. Is this board visible? So SYK has, there's an incredibly broad community of, of people working on it um, from different fields. So let me list those fields and then I'll tr as a way of introduction, I'll, I'll try to describe why, why the model is of interest to all these different communities. So string theory, ADS. ADS CFT, QFT. Some of these I'm not, there's not much of a difference, but uh, in any case, quantum gravity, condensed matter, quantum chaos, and black hole information. <coughs> so, so I'll try to say why, why each of these groups, or some people in each of these groups are interested in SYK. <coughs> so so the, the SYK model, it was introduced by Kitaev in, in a series of talks in 2015 at KITP. And, and the model is a, his interest was, was in fact black hole in information. And the model is, is related to a model, Sash Devanya, SY, considered in the 90s uh, from, from the condensed matter viewpoint. So, so, so the model is, is, is quantum field theory. In fact, there was a much earlier group studied uh, this model in 70, 1970, 71. This was in the field of nuclear physics to body random interaction model. Bahigas, uh, French, and uh, It was for certain not the SYK model. <coughs> exactly as it said in the TRX of such, such in 2016. <coughs> and they are cited only by us and the other. Um, all right. So, so this is quantum field theory in, in zero plus one dimensions. So the Lagrangian consists, so there are n Majorana fermions, n is large. Chi i d tau chi, this is a kinetic term. And then there's an interaction. Chi i1. So, so this is just the kinetic term, and this, this is a Q-body interaction. So Q can be any even number. Four, four is a typical case to consider, but um, one fixes Q and can talk about Q-body SYK. So N, the number of fermions, is very large, much bigger than one. So these are Majorana fermions, and they anti-commute. You can think of chi as just a creation operator plus an annihilation operator. <laughs> and, and these couplings, so, so here I have Q fermions and uh, a coupling with, with Q indices, I1 through IQ, which each range from 1 to N. And these couplings are, are drawn from a Gaussian distribution. With, with variance that, that, that scales as j squared and an appropriate power of, of n, which um, 
you'll see why, why this power is chosen. So, so this is a Q body Gaussian random and all to all interactions. So there's no lo notion of locality. In this interaction, one picks any Q fermions out of the N, and, and they interact with each other with this coupling J, which is drawn from this Gaussian distribution. Yeah, the question is, yes. scaling with N is really important. I mean, yes. if you ch choose it differently, it changes really the outcome. Uh, the yeah, the, the scaling with N is chosen so that the two-point function of fermions, um, that the that, that the correction to the two-point function of fermions from the interaction is something of order one. Um, if, if you chose this power to be larger, then it would just be trivial. Okay. Or more precisely, probably if you chose a different power, then a different, maybe a different class of diagrams would dominate. But uh, this power is important. So how important is that they are Majorana fermions? Or well, we can take usual fermions? You can take Dirac, that's fine too. Um, Kitaev just took, it doesn't matter. You could take Dirac and then you would put uh, you would put half of the Q over two creation operators C dagger and half C. Yes. But then uh, you, if you take say half C dagger at C, then you conserve a number of particles. Yes. But here you you do not. You That's right. Here you don't. That means uh, it's somewhat yeah, easier or less easier. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, one can repeat all the calculations with with a direct case. It's not so different. That's correct. You can also write each chi. Um, a Dirac fermion is two Majorana fermions, so you could, you, could equal, you could just write chi as C plus C dagger, <coughs> and then rewrite this, and this would be a sum of, of Dirac Lagrangians, which don't conserve but particles. But then you have contributions with the more C daggers. And yeah, that's right. So you do not have but the, the, the difficulty is the same. Um, and then the J, yeah, it, there's, there's no difference. Um, Kitaev prefers Majorana fermions, and Sashtev preferred Dirac, and so, um, but yeah. So, so, um, so that, that's the model. Um, the surprising feature of the model is that it's solvable. It's solvable perturbatively in 1 over n. But by solvable, I mean that correlation functions can, in principle, um, and in practice, uh, the correlation functions are determined by integral equations. So for instance, um, working at leading order in 1 over n, one can write down an integral equation for, for the fermion two-point function, which, um, which you can then solve numerically, or in the UV and IR, um, one can write down an analytic solution, which is already much more than you can do for a general theory with a Q-body interaction. So, so that's, that's the first feature, that it's solvable, which is obviously very useful. The second feature, um, which, which makes this model interesting, is that it's, it's a CFT in the infrared. It's actually nearly a, a CFT in the infrared. I'll, I'll describe later what I mean by nearly. Uh, for, the purpose, for most of the purpose of this talk, one can just say it's a CFT in the infrared. So the infrared is the same as strong coupling. Strong coupling being J. And, and in, the, in the infrared, the fermion dimension we call that delta, is given by 1 over q. So, so the two-point function of fermions in the infrared, chi i of 0, chi i of tau, is sine tau over tau to the 2 delta. So it, it's, it's the two-point function you expect for a CFT with scaling dimension delta, which is 1 over q. So for q equals 4, this is 1 quarter. In the UV, the fermions, they're Majorana fermions, so they're dimensionless. So the <laughs> One can say the, anom the anomalous dimension is 1 over q, and for finite q, that's an order 1 number. So this is a large change um, 
in the dimension as you flow from the UV to the IR. Any questions about the definition of the model? Not solvable only in this sense. You cannot state that uh, the statistics of level will be like a random matrix theory or something like that. Uh, Such statements are typical for quantum models. Uh, yes, good. So it's an, as I'll describe this model, as Kitaev noticed, is, is maximally chaotic in a sense of quantum chaos I'll, I'll define. One could then ask the question you just asked, which is how does it compare to the defini some, a definition of quantum chaos that was studied in the 90s of, of level statistics, and that's been explored in some papers. Uh, excuse me? Um, but but, but meta-analytically, you cannot yes. prove that it's... Uh, yes, it is true. Analytically, at finite Q, I do not know how to compute the density of states. So by solvable, I just, I mean what I wrote... So there's one story about level statistics is another. Yeah, they are not related. In the Anderson localization regime, yes. you density is not change when you go through Anderson transition. For yes. the statistics yes. of levels is changed from Poisson to Wigner dice. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it would be interesting to analytically um, um, see if Wigner dice is satisfied. The only thing I know how to solve is the correlation functions, um, which is the, the common definition of solve. Yes? Uh, when you write, for instance, the two-point function of the fermions, yes. uh, where is the average of the disorder? It's already been taken. So all quantities are after disorder average. Um, so, if you don't, so if you don't like disorder, there are multiple ways around it. The simplest one is just to, to think of that J just has a, it's just a free field with a two-point function that's a number, uh, and just proceed doing field theory as you would normally, and don't include any quantum corrections to J. So just draw a free propagator for J and, and proceed. And then you can forget about the disorder. Th there are other ways around it. Um, so, so let me, let me, uh, so it, it's interesting to, to compare how, how SYK um, relates to other large N models. So let me, let me, is there an eraser? I can erase this. So, so there are roughly two, well, there are two notable classes of, of large N models, one that I'll call hard and one that I'll call easy. So on the hard side, we have matrix models. Matrix models sum at leading order in one over n. They sum planar diagrams. Things like this. And except for special cases, it is generally hard to sum all planar diagrams. If you have a, a single matrix then uh, in, in zero dimension, then it's easy. Um, otherwise, it, it, it's generally hard. Um, so an example of, of a matrix model is, is, is n equals 4 super Yang mills. Uh, and, and the bulk dual to this CFT is, is of course, string theory. So. Um, is string theory, that's the bulk. And in the bulk at large, so in n equals 4 super Yang mills, one can change the Toft coupling. And at large Toft coupling, there's a large gap. Uh, there's a large gap, so there are a few light operators, and the rest have very large dimension, which translates into the statement that the, the, bulk, the bulk dual has, has a few light fields, and the rest are very massive. <coughs> so ju just, just what you get with string theory. Uh, right. So, so in this case, the 
the, the bulk theory is familiar, uh, but the boundary theory is, is not that familiar uh, and is supersymmetric and is hard to solve. So, so that's one case. Another well-known case is, is vector models, those some um, bubble diagrams. For, for instance, the ON vector model. So, so and the critical ON model, that's a CFT, and so one can ask what its bulk dual is. And, and its, its, bulk, its bulk dual has a tower of massless particles. And, and the theory in the bulk is, is higher spin Vasiliev theory. So, so in these two cases, I they're, they're on opposite sides of the board because they're very different. Um, both, both the theory, here we have a free ON model, H here we have n equals 4 super i mills, there, this is a, a strong soft coupling. And th the theories are very different, the boundary theories and the bulk theories are also very different. Here one has string theory wi with a large gap, so a, f a few light particles, the rest are very massive. Here one has higher spin Vasiliev theory where there's simply a tower of massless particles um, with spins changing even integers. Here you mean three dimensions? Three or, or more, or, or other dimensions. It's been, yes, the canonical case is, is ADS4 or CFT3, but it's been extended in some ways to, to other dimensions. Um, and so, as, so those are two cases. So SYK, I think it's fair to say, sits in the middle. So the diagrams, <coughs> The SYK sums are Mellon diagrams. They look like this. I'm only drawing the fermion lines. So this is SYK. So SYK can be said to be a new large N model that, that's truly different from either this or that case. So it sums Mellon diagrams as opposed to bubbles or planar. And so now we can, we have that the boundary theory is SYK. The bulk, the bulk theory, one thing that is known is that there's now a tower of massive particles. I'll describe that in more detail shortly. Um, so, so there's a tower of particles and their masses are roughly spaced by even integers, roughly. Um, so it's different from this case and that case. I guess it's more similar to this case. There's no large gap, uh, but they are <coughs> massive. Um, and the theory, what the bulk theory is, that's dual to SYK still, still remains an, an open question. Um, and in the second half of the talk, I'll describe progress that's been made towards answering this question. Uh, unlike these, well, in this, in this case, there was a brain construction um, from which Maldesena knew that n equals 4 super Yang Mills is, is, is the dual of string theory. In this case, Klebanov Polyakov, <coughs> there was Vasiliev theory around. And so it was natural to say that it, it's, it's the dual of ON, whereas here there isn't any obvious candidate for the bulk dual, at least not one that anyone has mentioned. Actually, let me go here. So, so um, in terms of symmetries, after you do the disorder average, wh which, is, which is all quantities will be after disorder averaging, SYK has an ON symmetry. Yes? Yes. Uh, do you have something similar for SYK where you can some sort of identify? Not that I'm aware of. Good. So, so in the in the matrix case, there was, as was known from Tuft in the 70s, already in the 70s, it was believed, it was believed that that matrix theories are string theories because the 
the expansion is in 1 over n in with the genus, which is like a string expansion. Um, and so one could ask, is there an argument in SYK that this is some theory of extended objects? Um, an argument like Tufts. I'm unaware of such an argument. Um, so there has been work um, on papers understanding the 1 over n expansion, but um, in the context of, of tensor models. Um, but I don't think it's anything that simple. Well, I'm not sure. So, so because it has an O1 symmetry after disorder averaging, it's by the usual rules of ADS-CFT, the things, the fields that are dual to something in the bulk are, are dual to the singlets under ON. So the bilinear singlets are schematically of the form So, so this is analogous to, to in the ON model, and in that, in that duality, the bulk, one considers the ON singlets, so we'll consider them here too, so ON will be this operator. And, and these are the things that are dual to fields in the bulk, phi n. And these have dimension, which I'll call HN. And the fields, the bulk fields dual to ON have masses by the usual ADS-CFT dictionary, which is set by the dimensions. So if we were at weak coupling, then the dimensions of these, of these operators would just be 2n plus 1. Uh, and so from this, this formula, you see that the masses in the bulk uh, would, would be approximately 2n, n is an integer. So, so that's the statement I was making, that in the bulk there is a tower of massive particles. So these dimensions are not 2n plus 1, because we're interested in strong coupling. They're an order 1 shift away from 2n plus 1. And I'll say what they are. So how it's correlated, you speak about massive particles, but how it's correlated with the statement uh, that there are no quasi-particles in SFI? <coughs> Good. Um, this, this is the bulk theory. This is not um, in SYK. So, the, so there is a dictionary, the ADSC dictionary, by which we will construct the bulk theory dual to SYK. Um, so it's like, it's like in the usual case of of, of strongly coupled CFTs, there are no quasi-particles, everything's strong coupling, and indeed, when the boundary is strongly coupled, the bulk is weakly coupled. Um, so it's because there are no quasi-particles that we can, one could say, um, there will be a nice bulk, perhaps. Okay, so now let me, let me go through this checklist um, of so let me list why SYK is of interest uh, for, for all these different reasons. So the first one, string theory. Uh, so as I said, there is no natural candidate for the bulk dual. Um, and so if it is reasonable that, that the, the dual of SYK uh, is perhaps a new theory of extended objects. Um, so so, so that, that's why it's interesting from this point of view. From the point of view of ADS-CFT, uh, it is a, a simple model of holography. Indeed, the title of, of Kitaev's talk was a simple model of holography. And so one, one could hope that that using SYK, because it is solvable, one can understand in more detail how holography works, how, how the CFT degrees of freedom organize themselves into a bulk. Um, this is, of course, a question that's, that's been well thought about over 20 years with, with partial success. Um, one could say the success is partial, perhaps, because um, the, the theories that have realistic bulk duals, like string theory, are very hard to solve. Whereas uh, something like the ON free ON model, the bulk dual is Vasiliev, which is very hard to understand. And so since SYK is in between, it's less easy to solve than ON, but less difficult to solve than N equals 4, 
one could hope that it's in an appropriate range where the bulk, um, neither the boundary nor the bulk are sufficiently, are too difficult. Yes? Why can't you get uh, this power by just doing some KK reduction? So, for example, like in this paper by Yevitsky and Das, okay. if you just take ADS two times another yes, direction yes, yes. and then you just solve the wave equation there with some funny potential, you can always hook up any spectrum of power of KK. You can, correct. The cubic couplings will be completely off. Um. We, we gauge the uh, whatever, yeah. SUN and so on. So, is there something that tells you that uh, you have to look at simplex or just. No. Um, no, it's, it's, um, here it's being forced by hand that we consider singlets. It's unlike, so in the case, in the case of, of, of that case, um, there one can introduce a churn simons term, then take the churn simons coupling to zero, da da da. Here we're just introducing it by hand. But it seems like a reasonable thing to do. Otherwise you might have too many, uh, yeah, yeah, otherwise there'd be too many particles. So that's why we say singlets. I guess one could, one could gauge the ON. Because it's zero plus one dimensions, it doesn't really make any difference. So you could gauge the ON and then just restrict to singlets. But no one forces, unlike a real gauge theory, you're not forced to consider singlets. So you could try to consider non singlets and ask what they're dual to. Um, yes? Uh, since you put it in this context, so the matrix models and the vector models, we know how to study in various dimensions. Yes. And you're going to study this uh, SYK in zero plus one? Yes. But since you're building a bulk, is it, I mean, the bulk will be. Progress, would it, would it be? Can you make any progress in other than zero plus one of um, these sort of melonic type graphs? Because yes, yeah, good. So, so the the bulk in this case will be ADS two. Um, it would be extremely useful if there was uh, a theory in higher dimensions that's not zero plus one, which only summed melonic graphs. But I'm unaware of such a theory. Because the other two models are easiest to study, not in zero plus one dimensions, right? Um, I mean, the bulk of these things. Yes, ADS2 has some features which are not present in higher dimensions. Um, currently, there is only SYK. Summing Mellon diagrams, currently, only there is only SYK, and that's in 0 plus 1. One can consider higher dimensional versions, but they're not the same. Um, there is nothing. Th um, they, they will not have the same symmetries. Um, SYK is the only nice one. Um. So, so th this is in fact, um, so this is why it's interesting from the from the QFT point of view that it's a new uh, a, a new large n model, w which is more involved than the ON model. Summing melons is more difficult than summing bubbles. Summing bubbles is almost trivial, uh, and as we just said, it would be very nice if if there was a higher dimensional version that, that only some melons, um, but there isn't really anything yet. It would also be nice if, if there was a, a limit in which summing melons corresponded to something physical. So if, um, if you took a lambda phi to the fourth theory or something and summed only melons, would that correspond to something physical? As far as I know, the answer is no, but it would be nice if it was yes. So why, yes? why the dimensions enters in the Hartree County? Uh, the, the, just the Lagrangian, that's in zero plus one dimensions. I understand, but why the graphs, uh, uh, it seems that the end counting of a graph depends on the number of dimensions. And if you increase the number uh, of dimensions, why the graphs are not the same? Um, the leading graph. Uh, if you, well, uh, you say just replace the, the um, It, it will no longer, so one can simply write the same Schwinger Dyson equation for the two point function, but just make it in two dimensions rather than one, and assume the ansatz that, there, that, that in the infrared one has a fixed point, you will get an inconsistency. So that will okay. be an incorrect. Uh, that's the point, but the, the selection of graphs seems to be the main thing independent. That's correct. Um, that's, uh, that's correct. Um, yes? Uh, about something physical. Actually, something very close to this is when you do fermions in a high dimension. So you get EMFT. Ah, uh, yes. Which is, well, it's either melons or melons or something else, but it's very close to this kind of approximation. So that's physical, if you accept large D as physical. Uh, yes, large, 
large D is like good. So large large D is is like the fact that we're using all to all interactions. Yeah. Um, so so that's a very generic feature. Um, the the thing that's special is summing only Mellon diagrams. Um, so in fact, so this is now we get to point number four, quantum gravity. So in fact, summing Mellon diagrams is something that some of you have been doing for years before SYK in the context of, of tensor models. So in tensor models, those have been known for a while now, that, that one sums Mellon diagrams. Um, so tensor models are, are, are a reasonable thing to consider because it's known that, that matrix models um, are, are discretizations of, of, of surfaces. So one could wonder, from, from which you build geometry, one could wonder if tensor models are, are the natural thing to build higher dimensional geometry. So from that perspective, it's reasonable to consider tensor models uh, and those some melons, which is what SYK is summing. Uh, from the condensed matter viewpoint, So uh, as was mentioned, SYK does not have quasi-particles, and um, it has been an open problem to, to, de to describe non-Fermi liquids, strange metals, and so, so SYK can be viewed as a model of this, um, fr from which one could try to understand its transport properties uh, and explain properties of strange metals, that the resistivity scales with the temperature, unlike temperature squared, like for Fermi liquids, and so on. Okay, next quantum chaos. <coughs> so, so um, in, in the 60s, Larkin and Avchenikov pointed out that there's, there's uh, a natural analog of, of the classical Lyapunov exponent to the quantum case. The, the quantum Lyapunov exponent, which is defined as, as the growth exponent of, of an out-of-time order four-point function. Um, uh, there are other definitions of quantum chaos, but one can use this one. I, it's reasonable for, for reasons I won't get into. In any, in any case, this, this definition of quantum chaos, unlike classical chaos, has a bound. So, so there's an upper bound on the quantum Lyapunov exponent. And, and as Kitaev recognized, SYK saturates this bound in the infrared at strong coupling. So, so it's maximally chaotic. Uh, finally, finally, black hole information. So, so the, the reason that it's interesting that it's maximally chaotic on if one is not interested in chaos by itself, is the fact that black holes, if one computes the same quantity, the out of time order four point function of black hole background <coughs> in Einstein gravity, one also finds the Lyapunov exponent is maximal. Um, th this was initially some of the motivation that SYK is, is, is a good model for a black hole. To be more precise, the, the bulk in, in two dimensions, there's no Einstein gravity. If one varies the metric, one just gets identically zero. And, and the, bulk, the bulk gravitational sector of SYK is, is Jacquis Heidelbaum gravity, so Dilaton gravity. So, so there's a, so the Lagrangian is phi r plus two plus L matter. So, so phi is the dilaton, so one introduces, and, and two is the cosmological constant. So it's different. If the dilaton were constant, this would be <coughs> like, like the Einstein-Hilbert action. Um, but this JT model was introduced as, as a model of gravity in two dimensions, um, because Einstein gravity is, is, is trivial. Uh, 
And in, in fact, it naturally arises when dimensionally reduces from, from higher dimensions. In any case, if one computes, if one forms a black hole in, in dilaton gravity and computes the Lyapunov of exponent, this out of time order four point function, um, then one finds that it's saturated uh, in the same way that it was saturated in SYK. And indeed, the gravitational, the gravita so to speak, gravitational sector of SYK, that portion of the bulk is, is, this, is this action. Um, the, the remaining open question is, is what is the action for, for the matter for, for this entire tower of massive particles? Um, in any case, so, so in this context of dilaton gravity, one can pose the information paradox and try to resolve it. Um, it's unclear how helpful SYK is to this because the information paradox is, is a bulk problem, so one would need to state, so it's unclear what CFT quantity <coughs> one should compute in order to resolve it, but if one could formulate what quantity that is, then in SYK one could compute it, uh, perhaps. Well, why could someone all the The dilaton. Yes, yes. Um, uh, partially. So. Um, I wasn't going to describe this too much, but um, the, the reason I said, so you'll notice that this is not ADS2, if it was, because um, this is not quite ADS2, um, which is consistent with, with what I said that SYK was only nearly CFT1. So there's, there's um, one can say one operator in the spectrum that breaks conformal invariance in the infrared due to reparameterization invariance. This is, this is related to the fact that there's still a tone gravity. I can give a more detailed answer afterwards, but... Um, si simplify Keres information load entropy in this case. Again? Phi, value of phi on your horizon, if there is any horizon. Yes. Keres information about yes. the yes. whole entropy. So it should have analog in your Kitaev model. Yes. Um, yes, another feature of SYK is that there is there is um, a large ground state entropy. Well, there's a lot, at infinite end, there's a large ground state entropy, um, which, which looks analogous to extremo black holes having entropy. Okay, so that's the end of part one. Any questions before I move on to part two? More questions? No, good. Sorry. Yes? Is there a relation between the operator that breaks conformal invariance and the Lyapunov of exponent? Yes, um, th the entire feature of maximal chaos is due to this breaking of conformal invariance. Um, one would have naively thought that, that the Lyapunov effect exponent is a property of the four-point function, so the entire spectrum of the theory, uh, all these operators should enter. But because of this breaking of conformal invariance, there's one that dominates, and so it's <laughs> that one that, that determines. So it's a universal, th the maximal chaos is probably a, a universal feature of, of CFT1s, of nearly CFT1s. It's not something that's special to SYK, which in fact, I in retrospect, is not so surprising um, because black holes in Einstein gravity, they all saturate the chaos bound, and we know there are many different theories that give Einstein gravity <coughs> in, in the low energy limit. Um, so Einstein gravity is universal in that sense, and so this, this analog in two dimensions is also somewhat universal. So if you somehow suppress the contribution of this operator, what will be the four point function? Would have no Lyapunov exponent or it would, but it would be so the correction the the correction to the Lyapunov exponent if you move slightly away from strong coupling, one could ask what that is. Um, that's in fact um, larger than the bound, uh, and the coefficient is of the wrong sign. But since it's a subleading correction, it's not it doesn't matter. There, there, if I have, yeah, yes. Uh, do I understand that you are saying that the main property of CSYK is not to saturate, uh, to be maximally chaotic, because that is sort of general, but it's to be solvable, or what? Um, okay, if it wasn't solvable, then we wouldn't <laughs> know what the Lyapunov effect exponent is. No, um, I'm, it's, so uh, in this model, uh, in this bulk theory of dilaton gravity, if one computes the Lyapunov exponent, it's maximal. <coughs> so, and this is a very, this is the, re the theory that one would consider for gravity in two dimensions. So, um, from that perspective, it's, it's, 
it's reasonable that, that the bound is saturated for this reason, that it's nearly conformally invariant. Yeah, so, so do you think any nearly conformal invariant yes. uh, theory in one dimension should have a gravitational view? Uh, yes. Uh, it will have, yes. Yeah. Um, f f I mean, yes, to the same extent that one would say that any large NCFT in higher dimensions is dual to something in the bulk. But this something could not, we could not call gravity if it's really Yes, correct, 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 correct. Yeah, um, normally we would say it's gravity if, there, if that large NCFT has a large gap. Then we'd say gravity, um, yes. Okay, let me move on to part two. Uh. Sorry, but for low energy excitations about above ground state, yes. what do uh, you expect? That uh, they are exponentially close to the ground state in the number of particles, or it's not required, or do you expect that uh, random uh, Wigner Dyson statistic of the type will be? <coughs> At very very early excitations above the ground state, or it's not required. Or uh, I would think that the model should have Wigner Dyson statistics, but I think that's been studied. But I'm not sure what the answer is. So let me about that. Once it's known that it has Wigner from seventy one, yeah. it's known that it has Wigner Dyson statistics in the middle of the spectrum. Yeah. There's a question about low and... Oh, yes, yes, yes I, see, I see what you're asking. Uh, the question, low energy, is that is really then... I'm not sure. Uh, um, uh, yeah, let me just say I'm not sure. <laughs> no, no, I, I meant to leave that one up. Oh, and it's true, I, I have no mechanism of taking it down. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good, any more questions and I'll know how to respond. <laughs> uh, so, so, constructing the bulk tool. <coughs> so, so, as we said, the bulk has a tower of massive particles. And so we would like to find their interactions. So their cubic couplings, quarter couplings, etc., uh, of this entire tower. So, so the idea is going to be uh, that, that we'll compute a 2k point correlation function of fermions in SYK. And, and then using the, the ADS-CFT dictionary, this will tell us about a k-body interaction in the bulk, the coefficient, um, the coefficient of this term. So, so the larger that k is, the more suppressed in 1 over n these coefficients are. So they're n to the k minus 2 over 2 suppressed. So by computing correlation functions in SYK, we can, order by order in perturbation theory, in principle, reconstruct the bulk Lagrangian. Um, so, so that's the idea. We will, uh, so the program is we will compute uh, these correlation functions, then construct the bulk Lagrangian, and then hope that at the end, um, one can give some interpretation uh, of this bulk Lagrangian, give some, hopefully, uh, in terms of some simple theory of extended objects which will naturally reproduce those couplings that we will find. It's unclear if that would work, but we can at least find the couplings. Yes? Is this a local expansion of the effective arrangement by local things? No. Um, I will simply use, so within SYK, we will compute correlation functions of these O's and then use the ADS-CFT dictionary. So there's going, we're not going to treat or try to rewrite the Lagrangian in some way so that it looks like a bulk. We will simply apply the rules of ADS-CFT. Uh, 
so, so to get started with the four-point function, so the four-point function of fermions, so one draws all the Feynman diagrams that, that contribute a leading order in one over n, so it's the sum of, of these diagrams. Each line is, is really the full propagator, so it includes the sum over all the Mellon diagrams. So, so um, this is the fermion four-point function. Uh, so, so this is known what this is. Uh, so once one brings, when one brings two chi's together, two chi's, so this is chi, chi. One gets a sum of these ONs uh, with some OPE coefficient CN. So, so the dimensions of these are HN, uh, as I said before. Um, Which, which is 2n plus 1 plus 2 delta plus some correction, which is not necessarily small, but of order 1. Uh, so, so 2 delta plus, so from looking at this operator, the dimension one expects is delta delta from here and here, 2n plus 1 from the derivative, plus some anomalous dimension coming from the fact that we're in the infrared, which, which I labeled by epsilon. So one, one derives these precise dimensions by, by summing all these Feynman diagrams. So the epsilon are computable? Yes, they're known. You just sum these diagrams and you get it. And these are just letter diagrams. So the four-point function of Bayesian integral equation, um, so it's trivial to write down what that equation is, and then it's somewhat non-trivial to solve it. Um, yes. And from this one determines the the dimensions and the OP coefficient. So more explicitly, these ONs, they, they behave like, like CFT two-point functions with dimension HN. So, so ON, ON goes like 1 over tau, 1, 2 to the 2 HN. So, so as we said, the bulk, so, so now we're going to apply the ADS-CFT dictionary that um, the dual of these operators, each of these operators is, is a bulk field. And so, so phi, n, phi n is a scalar field of this mass, so one could draw the corresponding bulk Witten diagram of, of this two-point function. So, so it's just this thing, this is the bulk. Uh, and so, so from, this, from this computation, we learn that the bulk Lagrangian um, has, has this tower of scalars um, and ranges from 2 to infinity, where the masses are set by these dimensions, which, which we know. So at infinite, at leading order in 1 over n, this is this is the bulk Lagrangian. And so the next question is, what are the, what are the, the three-point functions of the O's, which will then tell us about the cubic couplings in the bulk? Can I have a question? Yes. The four-point function, doesn't it also have a part of a continuum spectrum? No. So what was the one-half plus is? Yes. So in the computation of the four-point function, so the four-point function is trivial in the sense that it's just, it's just solving that integral equation. The difficult part is solving that equation. So one writes, um, one, one, one rewrite. So one needs to diagonalize this matrix. One could say it's a matrix, this, this kernel. Um, and those, one chooses a complete set of eigenvectors. And that complete set is what you're thinking of these dimensions, h is 1 half plus is and 2n. But then one needs to do that integral and sum uh, of 1 half plus is and 2n. After doing that, then one gets a sum of conformal blocks. And those conformal blocks are at the physical dimensions, uh, wh which are these. Um, so, so this is, in fact, analogous to, to higher dimensional CFTs, um, though, though slightly different. In, um, in, in even dimensions, 
One can write the four-point function as a sum of conformal blocks, or one can write it as an integral of one-half plus is. In odd dimensions, um, the representation one needs, if one is going to use this basis, is one-half plus is plus the two ends. So that's slightly unfamiliar. But um, at the end, it's just it's just a sum of conformal blocks with these physical dimensions. So are then are these from the operators? So if you take the OP of two ends, are you only going to get ONs, or you might get maybe four friends? Good. O N O M C N M K. Okay. Uh, plus the double trace. So we can write this. This term is square root of n, and then then here here there's a, a one plus one over n, a double trace O N O M P. This notation means double trace plus one over n double trace of some different uh, OR, OS, Q. Uh, so one would like to compute all these coefficients, so right now I'll compute this one. Uh, it's, it's the leading one in 1 over square root of n. This one just comes from free field with contractions. There's no cubic coupling that involves a delta that only shows up as fourth order? Or? There, good. I, I'm restricting to, I'm restricting to the, I will not be saying anything else about how, how so there are, um, I will just be talking about the, the, the matter sector and the couplings among themselves and not discuss how they couple to the dilaton. That's in principle computable as well. Though all of, so the, the reason we need the dilaton is because we can't work at SYK in the deep infrared. We have to move slightly away. Um, one can keep moving away and then <laughs> there'll be more and more terms involving the dilaton coupled to other stuff. But I'm not so interested in that, so I won't be computing it. But is there or is there not a cubic coupling? Just dilaton cubed? Not the dil dilaton coupling to two. Uh, yes, I think there is. Okay. And it's in principle computable, though I will not compute it. Okay. Uh, oh dear. Okay, so the thing I will compute is, is, is this coefficient, the C and MK. So, so this involves computing the six-point function of the fermions. So the Feynman diagrams look like this. So there are two classes of diagrams. One class are planar, and the other class are not planar, so they're a little more difficult to draw. So, so, the, so this is the six-point function. So this involves basically three four-point functions. Those are the four-point functions glued together. So that's what I did here. So I glued them in, in a way which is planar. And here, uh, three four-point functions come together to align. <coughs> I'm drawing all my pictures are for Q equals 4, but the equations are for general Q. Q equals 4 meaning four-body interactions. Good. So, so one can, again, sum these diagrams. Uh, and from this, compute the six-point function, and then from that, extract the three-point function of the bilinears. Uh, so th this is non-trivial to compute, um, but we computed it. So this determines, so these two things give this three-point function. It's a conformal three-point function, so its functional form is fixed by conformal invariance. But there's a, a number, well, a, func a number of, depending on n1, n2, n3, which, which one has to determine, and that, that's determined by summing these diagrams. And this, in turn, using the ADS-CFT dictionary, determines the cubic coupling. So in the bulk, in the bulk, uh, yeah. There's just one Feynman diagram, phi n1, 
uh, wh which is this one, uh, Feynman Witten diagram. Um, so, so the reason I say this determines that is because one simply assumes the bulk cube that one has a bulk cubic term of this form, uses ADS CFT to correspond to compute this, the CFT three point function one gets from, from this bulk Lagrangian, uh, and then compares that with, with the three point function one gets in SYK, and that sets this coefficient. So, so in this way, we're deriving um, the, the, the bulk dual of SYK. Could you just say a word how you compute it? So you, do you compute it in the same manner of this conformal blocks and... Um, Good. So, the uh, so, so we insert three four-point functions, da, 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 and then one has to do three integrals over these. Um, and so we do those integrals. It, it amounts to, well, these points are taken to be close. So the conformal blocks are very simple. One can, the hypergeometric function is just one. Um, but, but it amounts to, it, then one has to do what is effectively a for-loop integral, um, which is a, a conformal four-point integral, which is difficult to do. But um, physically, this is very simple. One just glues these together. Yeah. So, so let me tell you the, the answer. But the structure is responsible for the uh, none. Uh, I, the dictionary is you compute the, the, the bulk boundary dictionary maps the CFT three-point function into the bulk cubic coupling. I don't see any way in the bulk to distinguish which Feynman diagrams. You sum all Feynman diagrams and, that con and then the dictionary maps that sum. You can't map I don't know of a way to, to, fi to ask the question, what is the bulk dual of a single Feynman diagram? Uh, though that would be an interesting question. I don't think it would be anything reasonable. Um, yes? I'm a little bit confused about, um, so you mentioned that there are, there are, many, uh, there, there are many ground states, there are the degeneration of ground states, right? No. Um, or approximate degeneration of the large limit. Yes. So the question then is, when we compute these correlators, uh, on which state are we computing them? Uh, the ground state. Um, and uh, yeah, basically my question is whether it's uh, clear how to distinguish the one of n corrections coming from the interactions between the particles from one of n corrections that you may have uh, by considering either the ensemble of all of ground states or particular microstates, for example. Um, uh, so I'm at zero temperature in the vacuum. There's a unique ground state. I just compute in that. But um, I mean, there are many ground states, right? At no. I at the larger limit, at least, there's an accumulation of states. At finite temperature. At finite temperature. What do you mean by ground state at finite temperature? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, this I'm getting a little confused. I just <laughs> I just compute. <laughs> yes, this is Euclidean computation, right? So yeah, but that, I mean, yeah, everything's Euclidean computation. It doesn't matter, you can, it's the same. Um, Lorentz and Euclidean, when one dimension, it's the same thing. Well, you have a ground state entropy, right, in this model? Yeah. So there are many ground states, or in some approximate sense. Yes, yes, yes. So then the question is, these correlators are computed on which of them? Um, what's the difference? Well, I imagine that these correlators will be approximately the same all, mm, all of these ground states. Yes, but good. But I'm worried about the one over n corrections that statement and how those one over n corrections are distinguished from the one over n corrections due to interaction. Yeah, yeah, okay, I see the question. I'm not sure. I think it doesn't matter. I'm not. Yeah. Um, okay, L let, me s let me state the answer to, to what this lambda looks like. Um, so, so the, this lambda, it's useful to think of, of these two contributions, two classes of Feynman diagrams contributing to lambda. So, so this one is, in fact, easier to calculate. Um, and its form is, is somewhat simple. It's some product of gamma functions uh, of the ni's. So, so lambda is, we can write this as lambda n1, n2, n3, 1, plus lambda n1. 
so this comes from this one comes from these diagrams and this comes comes from these diagrams so this one is, is simple and for large n i it decays uh, this one this this one coming from these diagrams is complicated uh, we can only evaluate it at large q and it grows exponentially um, it grows exponentially uh, for large n i so so the couplings the couplings these couplings for for the uh, the, the self-coupling of, of a very massive field grows exponentially with the mass, which seems surprising. And this actual function is complicated. OK, so that's the answer for, for S by K. So one would like to understand this answer better. So then we did the following computation. Um, we considered free field theory, really generalized free field theory. And so compute. We compute ON1, ON2, ON3 in, in generalized three field theory. So, so just take those, those operators there. Uh, that's actually heuristic. They're, they're more complicated because they need to be primaries. And just do WIC contractions and, and compute these these three-point functions. So we do that calculation. And the answer is, in fact, extremely similar to the answer one gets from, from these Feynman diagrams in SYK. The answer in free field theory is similar to the answer in SYK. In fact, in fact one can write lambda n1 and 2 and 3 as a simple function of n1 and 2, 3 lambda n1. Did you explain what generalized is? Or? I will in a minute. Let me um, let me just uh, just say this. So if if one considers the bulk dual of this generalized free field theory, and computes their lambdas, then these lambdas are related by a simple function to 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 a piece of the dominant piece of of um, this piece of of the lambdas coming from S Y K, where this function goes to one for large n i. So in other words, the couplings, the couplings um, uh, f the of the highly massive fields among themselves in the bulk dual of S Y K, it approaches the couplings in, in the bulk dual of a generalized free field theory uh, at large mass, which at first seems surprising. So by generalized free field, I meant uh, take the, the two-point function chi i uh, to be one over sine tau over tau to the two epsilon, and then take epsilon to zero at the end. It's just because if you take sine tau, then, then it's topological, so taking derivatives gives just delta function, so we make it. Um, so so there, there are two things, um, two things left to explain. Th the first is why, why we got, why um, the result of this difficult calculation in SYK a piece of it, only a piece of it, but the one that's dominant at, at large mass, this one, is so similar to generalized free field theory, so that we've understood, and that result will appear soon, but I don't have time to explain it. Um, the, the second question is, what happens, so that was the three-point function, so the cubic couplings in the bulk. The second question is, is what happens um, at the level of the quartic coupling. Um, so then, one should so one should now compute the eight-point function in S Y K and some of these diagrams. So this is again conceptually easy but technically difficult to do these integrals, and the doing this should be very useful because this will teach us about the 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 quartic couplings. But but in the bulk there'll be many quartic couplings, so in the bulk one will have lambda n one through n four phi n one through phi n four. But one will also have terms with derivatives on some of the phi's, um, each with their own coefficients. And so it will be very interesting to know 
uh, how those higher derivative terms, how those coefficients compare to the lower derivative ones. If, if the higher derivative, so there'll also be terms with lots of derivatives, lots of derivatives acting on the phi's. So the, an interesting question is how non-local the bulk theory is. So if it were the case that one just had this term with no terms with derivatives, then the bulk would be local at, at this level. That seems extremely unlikely, so there will be higher derivative terms. And depending on how quickly their coefficients decay or not decay, will indicate to what extent the bulk is local or non-local, which, which, is, which is an interesting thing to ask because one might think that, well, we have a variant of the model which is conformal at all couplings. And so we can tune, that's the explanation of the, the, the first point. So I'll say it, but won't write any equations. We can tune the, we can change the coupling from, from zero to, to strong coupling J and observe how, how the, the cuba couplings change. And so it's interesting to ask as you change from the theory being a free theory uh, to being one that's, that's strongly coupled, how, how the bulk changes. Um, since one would think that the bulk should be more local the, the stronger the coupling in, in the CFT. Uh, but I don't know the answer yet, so thank you. Okay, we have many questions during the talk, so we'll take just a few, please. So if I look at the Lucas function of effective plot theory, yes. can I identify items in the heroic thing that correspond Good. So the, the, what I was discussing was constructing the bulk Lagrangian, the tree level bulk Lagrangian. And then there, are indeed, then there are loop corrections in the bulk. Those correspond to 1 over n corrections in, in the CFT. So in particular, if one considers the, the, so the C, let me go over here. So to leading order in 1 over n, the four point function of fermions was this to leading order one over n, but this has corrections. Um, which one over n corrections, which go like this. Uh, so one could compute these corrections, and that would correspond to these um, loop, loop diagrams. Um, in the bulk. So you can see can the diagrams of the fermions so that you see the topology of the... You can, well, the diagrams of the... The rules we're using, the fermions themselves don't correspond to anything. So from this I extract the... From this I would extract the... the cr so from this I move these close together and this gives the loop correction to the two-point function of the ONs. So the two fermions make an ON, so this is a loop correction to the ON. You said that the COE is almost conformal invariant. Yes. But then you, s you use J as a free parameter to change it, the COE. So that was you elaborate on that? my comment at the end? Yeah. Good. Um, so it would be. Uh -huh. uh, uh, so David and I have. So David and I introduced to appear. So we call this C S Y K. So this is like S Y K, but the Lagrangian we change the the kinetic term, and instead of making a chi d tau chi, we make it bilocal. Uh, and the interaction term is the same, J I one, I Q. So, so this is C S Y K, and the statement is that this has a line of fixed points. Ah, sorry, delta is one over Q, and this has a line of fixed points. So this is conformal, has S L two R symmetry at any value of J. Normally, it's very hard to get a line of fixed points. This is relativistic or what? Uh, no, no, no. Well, one dimension. So what's the dimensionless parameter? Yeah. Which, 
j, j, the two-point function of j. So, so j is again disordered with that two-point function. Isn't that dimension full? Oh, yes. There j had dimension one, here it's dimension less. This, uh, exactly, now chi has dimension delta. In other words, what we did was that in SYK, the fermion flows from dimension zero, which is what the kinetic term gave it to dimension one over Q, which is what the interaction wants it to have. We simply changed the kinetic term so that it starts out with dimension one over Q, and then it always has dimension one over Q. Um, and, now, and now this, this, the dual of this, there is, so because we changed the kinetic term, the, there's no diffeomorphism invariant, there's no time reparameterization invariance, and the bulk is not gravity, it's just field theory in a fixed background. Um, w w right. And so we, there's no diloton in the bulk. So for, for the purposes of constructing the bulk theory, this makes it easier. Um, because, yes, for the purposes of studying the information paradox, it's not good, because there's no gravity. Um. Okay, is there one more question? Okay, if not, let's thank Vladimir and all the speakers of today.